Selling was mostly confined to Nasdaq and mega caps. However, small caps actually hit new records, and they are being led by regional banks, which also hit a 52-week high. Also, junk that closed that record, so by and large, I think this uh, pullback could be a buying opportunity already. We will look at a trade example for 3M. If you are um, still open, if you still have a 3M, I would continue holding it. Big congratulations on that one. We will also look at copper, which entered now a new downtrend. And we will look at gold and silver, and silver is already could be a buying opportunity. All this and more in today's edition of MasterChartsTrading.com Market Recap for Friday, July 26, 2024. This is Alexander. Please remember to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, make a comment, share this video. These actions are what keeps this channel going again. Thank you for them. Uh, if you are a subscriber, stay tuned. We have um, a, a bunch of various securities we are going to be covering, uh, namely market breads, Bitcoin, Ethereum, crude oil, and natural gas are all in the members-only video. If you're not yet a subscriber, consider signing up by following the link in the description. Large cap stocks, ETFs, several of the speculative stocks such as uh, Newell Brands, a uh, very big move there, uh, as well as Figs that could be interesting and DocuSign could be interesting and some of the gold related. Throughout the presentation I'll be using my proprietary master charts trading.com price action indicators which you can see on this chart, this green, blue, red and yellow line. Again you can find out more about them by following the link in the description. So first and foremost, let's look at uh, NASDAQ QQQ. Um, vast majority of selling was basically confined to um, a few stocks, um, few uh, large cap stocks. A lot of <clears throat> Magnificent Seven, we can look at Magnificent Seven stocks. Uh, so we got Tesla, Apple. Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, and Nvidia, and about equal weighting. And this is um, down 14% since uh, 10th of July here. QQQ is not, you know, purely those stocks, so it's not down as much, it's down about 10%. S&P 500 is down probably even less than that, down about 4%. So uh, notice what's, what I'm trying to say here is that basically we have um, several mega cap stocks pulled back and this is dragging the market down. Question is, is this now, actually not even a question, uh, many of these stocks, for example, Alphabet and Meta are already down to where I would be consider buy, considering buying it. Um, Tesla also is down where I would be considering buying it. So all of those together, you know, it looks like we're about to at least bounce higher. Um, you know, we are, we are already past this green support resistance line, so we're definitely overextended somewhat. We're actually very close to the um, blue line, at which point I would consider this whole thing uh, to be over in a sense of it will become a buying opportunity. I'll be thinking about buying it at this point. But for now, most likely we'll see at least an attempt to bounce. Uh, notice here for S&P 500, uh, the stock price is already down to the green line and we're now attempting to bottom at this green support resistance line. So we're watching this pretty closely and uh, you know seeing if there's any opportunities uh, for buying. I don't think we're uh, in the reversal uh, phase yet. I don't think we're going to continue down from here. I mean, we could continue down some, but in the sense of we're not in a bear market for sure. Another reason why I don't think we're in a bear market is because of the breadth of the market advance and here are the small caps. So 
you, you notice that the chart looks totally different. Here is a small cap surging from 10th of July, strongly surging uh, towards, uh, I think this is two year high here. Uh, at the same time, the Magnific Magnificent Seven uh, from 10th of July pulled back. So who do we believe? Um, do we want to believe a, a majority of stocks in the, in the market that are moving up? Or do we want to believe a few stocks that are pulling back and could present themselves with a buying opportunity? So for me, I think the choice is pretty clear. I want to believe more stocks. I want to believe more broadly uh, what's going, you know, what is happening with the stock market. And I think uh, small caps, uh, equal weight ETF, RSP, you know, it's also up uh, for the same time as Magnificent 7 was down. So by and large, we're seeing um, good market participation. And uh, I think we're most likely going to work off these issues pretty soon uh, and resume our uptrend. Anything is possible, but most likely this is the um, most likely scenario. Within the small caps IWM, we can look at KRE, which is regional banking ETF, and this thing was just on a tear. Uh, this is a 52 week highs here, so actual alert back in uh, June, 24th of June. Very nice move, so if you're still open, I would consider, I would continue holding. We're up, um, let me see, about. Uh, 20 20 percent already wow not bad yeah it's about 25 26 percent in just a few days and this is a um, it's an ETF so it contains many stocks uh, within the small caps IWM uh, the uh, Russell 2000 small cap index the financials actually make up the biggest part so it's 18 percent of the uh, small caps is a financial and so this kre is a regional banking it's basically small banks uh, all around the united states and they are definitely part of the small cap uh, etf the iwm and so you can see that the surgeon uh, kre the regional banking uh, is pretty much negating uh, any pullback that we're seeing in a of, you know mega cap stocks such as Amazon, such as Tesla and Google. Another point I wanted to make is the fact that high yield bonds JNK uh, didn't do anything at all. So here is July 10th where I'm hovering, where Magnificent Seven decided to move down. Junk debt actually moved higher. So high yield bonds and um, High yield bonds and stocks correlate very highly. They're doing about the same thing. And when when I'm seeing this type of thing, where I'm seeing actually a bullish divergence, uh, and when when the small uh, when when the high yield bonds are actually moving higher, and at the same time the stocks are moving lower, I kind of want to believe that the, the the high yield bonds. This is smarter money uh, versus the stocks which are. Consider it dumb money, but I wouldn't necessarily call it that. Um, so overall, from based on all of this uh, that I just presented, the um, large cap stocks, especially the mega caps, pulled back. And they could be already presenting themselves as an opportunity to buy. Uh, big um, moves for uh, regional banks and small caps are negating most of the pullback uh, in the large cap stocks and I think we will again uh, bottom out and most likely make new records uh, relatively soon. So this is the state of our current uh, stock market and we will continue monitoring it as well. I wanted to give a trade example uh, for MMM also known as 3M so uh, pretty obvious what happened here uh, but let's just kind of go through it so 3m this is back in october 2023 you can see this is actually a, a multi-year i believe lows 
yeah definitely multi-year lows here um, and then something happened and we started moving higher so actual alerts here in December of 23 and early January of the 24 of this year um, up alerts meaning we want to be buying this and notice that at first the trade did not go in our favor but uh, you have to realize that my our stops for this type of trades is always at the yellow line so notice that uh, the stop was actually never hit we got down to the red line but we never got down to the yellow line um, a few months later the stock righted itself made a new uh, and then moved higher so at this point notice here around april of this year so notice that we entered sometime late 2023 early 2024 this year and uh, in about three to four months we're seeing a target that was finally hit now at this point what, what i usually do is i move my stop from the back from the yellow line i move it back i move it up to the entry and at this point you basically just do nothing you just sit in a position and trail higher i usually trail at the blue line itself so notice what happened uh, today we had a very positive earnings for 3m the stock gapped up to some some 23 percent uh, and if you are still open if your position is still open from the january of this year then you're up 43 percent and that's a very big congratulations so if you uh, if you did open uh, make a comment um, and if you are still you know holding uh, or if let's say you traded using uh, options definitely make a comment i would love to uh, make this a teaching point because options are they're somewhat difficult to trade but they're extremely rewarding so like for example if this this was an options trade then you could have been in a very big plus here by now so again congratulations on a 3m trade uh, and if you opened let me know uh briefly let's look at some of the commodities so dr copper copper futures here uh, hg1 exclamation point so notice that the latest bullish alert here in uh, mid-july didn't really work out and in fact uh, copper completely unraveled and actually closed below the red line at this point we will consider um, copper to be in a downtrend and if you have an opportunity to sell it short then you could potentially try that uh, open in a short position in, uh, in the United States unless you have a futures account then you cannot really trade it um, using ETFs uh, what does this mean uh, so copper um, has not a very strong correlation uh, but somewhat okay correlation to the s p 500 so down below here is s p 500 and you can see it sometimes it's just all over the place and sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's negative there is a tendency towards positive correlation so when i see things like uh, copper breaking below the red line and entering a new downtrend i start to worry because what if we're now seeing a reversal for copper which is a, a precursor to the reversal for stocks we're not seeing reversal for stocks yet but um, you know copper all of a sudden did switch into a downtrend could this be a small fluke possibly sometimes this does happen uh, and this could be a false signal so we're going to be watching again very closely to see what the copper miners are doing um, and if they're confirming this move down for copper and let's wrap things up we're currently looking at dollar currency index so i still think that dollar is currently in an uptrend uh, and that's why all of this upward facing arrows above the blue line if uh, we get down to this red support resistance line which is at around 103 uh, which is about uh, one percent down for 
dollar currency index then we will be in a downtrend if you trade gold uh, then it makes sense because it's uh, gold is traded in US dollar, so it's XAU divided by USD. If the bottom part of this equation is getting smaller, weaker, then gold should benefit. Vice versa, if dollar uh, is getting stronger, uh, then it will pull this currency pair lower. As of right this instance, the golden dollar has not exactly normal correlation. Uh, we're seeing gold and dollar moving up together. So for now, we'll just kind of take them apart, so to speak, um, and, you know, trade gold separately versus dollar separately. So I'm looking at uh, gold right now. This is our all time highs that were set uh, last week, uh, July 17th. And now we're basically pulling back and we're touching this green support resistance line. Um, silver already has moved significantly lower towards this blue support resistance line. So basically at this point we want to be buying. And notice that we were buying silver basically at the blue line uh, for with good results. Uh, it's currently at what is it, $27.80 or $28 or so. Um, I think if we close above the blue line that would be a signal to buy silver question is will it continue higher uh, it's a million dollar question nobody really knows but uh, the risk is lower when we're buying around the blue line because we're buying on a pullback so we're waiting for the trade to come to us we're not trying to chase the trade higher so basically at this point I'm waiting for silver to bottom out close above the blue line which is at 2808 28 dollars eight cents so if we close above that level around 28 uh, 28 dollars then we would consider buying silver again all right uh, let me know what you guys think thank you again for watching all the way to the end stay tuned on how to find me on the uh, internet and how to get this uh, lines this gr uh, green blue red and yellow lines onto your chart for tradingview.com so this uh, interface is called tradingview.com and it's free so you can open a free tradingview.com account once you did open a free tradingview.com account go to my site mastercharttrading.com there's also a link in the description click on sign up and sign up for one of the products so again i have the trading indicators this indicators of this lines in the chart they will help you trade pretty much anything under the sun on most time frames um, I like to trade on daily mostly uh, or weekly charts but you can also do uh, you know minute or second charts should you so desire uh, so this this is what I call uh, this is what the lines indicator lines are you can have them on your chart for only 24.95 per month if you buy yearly or 29.95 per month if you buy a monthly subscription the newsletter is um, I send out daily alerts and uh, members only videos uh, weekly on various securities that we trade so for example this week we'll be covering uh, various uh, securities uh, market breadth Bitcoin Ethereum crude oil natural gas ETFs large cap stocks speculative stocks and some of the gold related so this is what what I call newsletters they I send out daily alerts and the weekly members only video at 33.29 per month uh, for a yearly subscription uh, or a 39.95 per month for a monthly subscription and both uh, both in trading indicators and newsletters are available as a very good deal uh, 49.95 per month if you buy a yearly subscription or 59.95 per month if you buy a monthly subscription all of the subscribe subscriptions are uh, they have free seven day trial so you have seven days to try it out if you don't like it cancel it no questions asked again thank you for watching if you have any questions please let me know uh, may I make a comment share this video thank you for watching have another great trading week bye bye